It's space weather! Check out the sun and 193 angstroms. Not a lot of activity going on. Coronal holes. One rotating out. One new one rotating in. We're awaiting an increased solar wind speed. We've had a little perturbation in the density. We'll break it down in a minute after we look at 171 angstroms. Let that rotate through. There you have that. Look at the magnetic lines. Still a big field coming out of that coronal hole. Not sure on the connection. We'll get to it. Now, for those who watched our video about the Anchorage earthquake last night, we apologize for having the music way too loud. Our Golden Cap Productions DJ must have lost his damn mind. In any case, Anchorage got a 7.0 earthquake and a series of aftershocks. Still getting some small quakes up there. Just a constant swarm going on. Albania got a 4.4 five hours ago. And we got a couple, and we got an upper level four there at Big Lake, Alaska. And Fiji receives another 561 kilometer deep 5.0. Wow, so the West Coast remains on alert. I mean, what's the latest in California here? A 2.89, huh? In any case, California stays on alert. Really every place that's got earthquake alert stays on alert. Let's look at the space weather information at spaceweathernews.com. X-ray flux, pretty flatlined. Nothing too noteworthy there. We do have a divergence of the BTBZ, as you can see right here. And still no, no ongoing phi angle signal. Kind of odd, the coronal hole seems like it never magnetically connected or has yet to magnetically connect. Now. We see the signal of an incoming solar wind stream as expected yesterday. We see this uptick in the density reflected on both the ACE and the Discover. It's now above 10 protons per cubic centimeter. And the wind speed looks like it's bottomed out and now it's headed back up again. So that's gonna increase along with the KP index throughout the day. Here's your magnetometer data, and actually there's some pretty weird, pretty weird spikes down there at the bottom of the range. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Like we said, earthquake risk continues. KP index is up at one, and we're gonna expect that to go to probably to five in the next two days. Which is a a mild geomagnetic storm. Nothing too worrisome there. And we see the signature electron flux dip, typically associated with coronal hole wind streams. And so, charging hazards are non-existent. And we do see pretty, pretty discharged ionosphere there. And there's your auroral forecasts. Let's look at some earth weather stuff. Compliments of windy.com's fantastic free application. All right, we're looking at upper level winds here at 9,000 meters. Part of this pattern that was there yesterday is still there. Um, you can see it's pretty interesting actually. The jet stream is splitting in half right here. Splitting into 
going north and to south. And then you've got this little low pressure system here in between that junction. It's a very odd sequence there. And the jet stream's just curving right up over Alaska. Now this was tighter yesterday. This was more like it was all down here. Could it have been associated with the earthquake? Not sure. We wouldn't rule out the possibility. Now, let's look at the rest of the jet stream. As it is extremely meridional and broken up. In fact, it's so broken that it's actually pointing to the northwest. In this location, right over Missouri, near the Missouri, uh, Missouri Kansas border, near Oklahoma. See, the jet stream is actually going backwards there. It's, I mean, if it's going west in any way, that's a backwards bit of jet stream. Let's look at the rest of it here while we're on the Windy app. See, it's breaking up over here. Completely, completely broken into bits. And then... You know, some low, some low pressures in here. Meridional jet stream flow. Check it out. And while we're here, let's just look at the radar. It's also going to show lightning. Great application. Highly recommended. Windy.com. Do have some lightning over the Gulf of Mexico. And let's take a look at that on lightningmaps.org. Another great website we recommend you go to. Next time you get a thunderstorm in your area, head to lightningmaps.org. Put in your location or zoom in on your location. You will actually be able to see individual strikes show up on this map before you hear the thunder. Super cool. Anyway, there's your lightning map. Let's look at the... Uh... Oh, well, let's look at the whole planet in shortwave. How about that? Actually, let's close that tab. All right, let's look at the US Doppler radar while we're looking at Earth weather. And you can see strong, heavy storms. There's a big convergence going on down in this area, which we're going to show you in a minute. And there's an ongoing chance for very heavy storms. As you can see, we've got snow and wintry mix all over the north central. As this large system slowly creeps its way toward the northeast. Let's look at the water vapor map so you can see what's going on in the upper level. So we have a major convergence zone here and here where that dry, colder, and more massive air is uh, mixing in with that moisture. And the jet stream is actually coming way down like this. And then it's way over here, shifted off into the Atlantic. And that's kind of providing a ceiling for this moisture. It's going to help to steer this moisture a little bit more to the east. In any case, that gives you some idea of what's going on with the weather situation. The Earth weather situation, that is. And... And now let's get into the weeds with some interesting articles. Here's one from fizz.org. This one is about black holes. It's an exciting time to be alive right now. You are living through a neo-renaissance. Well, what does that mean? Well, what that means is astrophysics, cosmology, physics in general, they're all being rewritten as we speak. And here's yet another example. In fact, an astronomer in this article actually says what I just said. So here's an Alma image. This is the Circinus galaxy. And what we've discovered is 
is that these uh, these rings of gas that are surrounding black holes are actually fountains. Now, for some of us, that's not that surprising. Here's a here's an artist's rendition of it. I'm going to go to the actual the actual data. Here's the data of what's going on at the core of this galaxy. You've got cold gas being drawn into this disk, which you see right here. And as it gets drawn into the disk, it's heating up. It's getting pulled closer and closer to the center. And as it does that, it rotates faster and faster. And a bunch of that gas gets heated up very hot and gets expelled out perpendicular to the rotation in these relativistic jets that we always see associated with black holes. And let me just read this quote. By investigating the motion and distribution of both the cold molecular gas and warm atomic gas with ALMA, we demonstrated the origin of the so-called donut, in quotes, structure around active black holes, said Izumi. Based on this discovery, we need to rewrite the astronomy textbooks. That sounds like a step in the right direction, doesn't it? Moving on, by the way, we'll leave links to these articles. Another article on phys.org is lost. It's not really lost. That was just the wrong tab. Now, Oh, sorry. This is Universe Today. Anyway, we'll leave links to this article as well. All right. So here's a very interesting cave painting. I believe this one's about 40,000 years old. And we just thought this was, uh, you know, drawings of animals. But now we're seeing remarkable evidence that this is actually a drawing of a catastrophic event, a comet collision, and that uh, that bull is actually constellations. And is that Cygnus right there? Hard to say. Apparently prehistoric people had a pretty advanced knowledge of astronomy. In fact, a lot of these cave paintings, it turns out, may have been astronomical calendars. They knew about the procession of the equinoxes, and they were apparently using that as some sort of a timepiece. Now, how they would know that is pretty interesting because you've got to study this for a long time to understand precession. I mean, precession is caused by the Earth's wobble. It's what makes Deneb become the North Star at some times of the year. And Polaris, you know, it's a it's a it's a 26,000 year cycle where Polaris is at one end and Deneb is the other end in terms of your celestial North Pole. Anyway, interesting article. Um it does mention Gobekli Tepe, as seen here in its early stages of excavation. So check that one out. Check that one out. Have an earthquake plan. And thanks for viewing the video. Notice we've toned down the music today because we don't want to blow anybody's speakers out, and we'd prefer you to be able to hear us without straining your ears. Thanks again for watching. Thanks especially subscribers. We'll be doing it again tomorrow if we don't do it this afternoon first. Remember, when you're driving, don't drink. And if you drink, don't drive.